Um, now, let us move to the first slide. The presentation of my, uh, the purpose of my presentation is to discuss the importance of SMEs and gross companies. Well, gross companies means SMEs are not supposed to remain SMEs and small companies, but they have a, a, a potential for, for dynamic growth. What is their role in the economy? What is the uh, role they can play in financial markets? How can they develop? How can they uh, uh, provide a boost to sustainable development? And what are the obstacles they face in this process? And what can be done to enhance the possibilities for capital market finance of SMEs? The purpose of my presentation is to present a dynamic and evolutionary model. It is not supposed to provide a substitution to anything which is being done in this country. And there's quite a lot of initiatives which already exist. Uh, in my country, there's a saying that many roads lead to Rome. And um, uh, it is important that we move into the same direction and that we move forward. And this is uh, actually the purpose of my presentation. The project which uh, is on the table now is about mobilizing resources for sustainable development, matching talents with finance. Um, in the first part of the presentation, the concept will be presented, and I hope we will have a very constructive uh, discussion on that. In the second part of the paper, I will then present proposals to the UAE to implement the model as a driver for national economic development and as a pilot for the Gulf region. Now, what are we talking about? <clears throat> What are SMEs? What are family-owned and controlled enterprises? And what are growth companies? Well, the SME definitions you can find in the uh, UAE SME law. They vary from country to country and according to the policies pursued. You find on this slide the most current definition of SMEs. I would like the, uh, to add the notion of family-owned and controlled enterprises because they uh, include a range of companies which have a strong in, uh, impact in this region, but also in other countries, in Europe, for example, to uh, economic development. And growth companies, they actually are originating from SMEs, from startups, but they are dynamic, innovative, and have a potential of above average growth and expansion beyond the original size of SMEs. And uh, a large number of the emerging growth companies do have a concentrated ownership structure with a, a dominant owner and they are not listed on stock exchanges. <clears throat> now, what is the contribution of SMEs and closed family businesses to inclusive economic uh, growth. Let me say that according to economic evidence, SMEs and family-controlled businesses are drivers of economic growth and sustainable development. To, to demonstrate this, in Dubai, SMEs uh, account for 95% of all firms, 42% of the workforce, and 40% of GDP. In the MENA region, we do have a high uh, range of youth unemployment. And in this area, SMEs and family businesses can be very valuable sources of employment. And this is particularly true for a period of restructuring of large enterprises on the way to the development of a knowledge-based and digital economy and the downsizing of the public sector. As trade barriers diminish and the cost of logistics and communications decline, SMEs and growth companies are seeking to adapt to the challenges of becoming competitive in the international marketplace. They are increasingly integrating into international value chains. 
to give you an, uh, an illustrative example of my own country, Germany. The role of Germany as the most dynamic economic uh, European economy is largely due to the strong basis of SMEs and family-owned growth companies, the so-called Mittelstand. The German SME sector contributes on average more than 50% of the value added of the economy. 54% of German SMEs are bringing a high level of product or process innovation to the market, and this is largely about above the EU uh, average. The German SME sector provides some 1,300 world market leaders in export niches, in particular in the field of electric, electrical engineering and industrial products. According to an international survey, high-performing SMEs, which are integrated into international business, have seen in recent years an annual growth of more than 10% for G7 economies and more than 20% for emerging economies. <laughs> so we have an enormous growth potential in this sector, which is still untapped in many countries, in particular in, this, in the Gulf region. You do have SME laws and policies in the UAE and other GCC countries. There's also another important example of recent reform. Kuwait's recent amendment of its SME law and the expansion of its SME fund activities. This dates uh, a couple of months ago. There are equity funds, there are investment funds and important capital developments in the UAE. The question is, how can SMEs and growth companies benefit from these developments? SMEs and growth companies are key to diversification <coughs> strategies which will diversify economies in the region away from dependence on oil and gas revenues. There are efforts to encourage startups for knowledge and digital economies services, ecological transition, and green technologies. In these areas, SMEs can be drivers for innovation. They uh, can lead to mobilization of investment and entrepreneurship within value chains. Existing initiatives include the Abu Dhabi Global Markets, the strategy Dubai 20. 21, the Saudi Arabia vision of um, 2030, the Dubai National Fund for SMEs, sponsorship for a project which goes beyond uh, providing care beyond purely finance. For Dubai, the SME agency of the Department for Economic Development has recently issued a comprehensive report on the state of SMEs, which serves as a source of inspiration. All these initiatives are part of an ongoing effort to improve the investment climate, including institutional capacity building, infrastructure and capital development, to provide an appropriate legal framework <clears throat> including the protection of intellectual property rights and including financial systems which are capable of mobilizing and channeling investment to firms which provide innovatory inputs. <clears throat> now, there are challenges of course in this area, otherwise we would not be here today. The challenges are access to information, access to skills, access to markets, and access to finance. Addressing these challenges is successful transformation of the GCC states into a knowledge economy, 
will involve an ongoing process of structural and tangible change and will have to be intergenerational in nature. Mobilizing the talents of the young generation will be key to this process. There are financial constraints as well in the SME sector. <clears throat> we still feel a lasting impact of the financial crisis, which actually led to a credit crunch. There were increased interest rate spreads between SMEs and larger enterprises. The agencies direct finance through public financial institutions, credit medita mediation, and easing capital market access through regulatory reform. For the UAE, the SME law of 2014 sets SME contract targets for government entities and government-related firms. A laudable example of government-driven finance is the Mohammed bin Rashid Fund for SMEs, which is dedicated to supporting innovative pilot projects through seed capital and loans. Funding, however, is limited to UAE nationals. Maybe we have a chance in the course of the discussion to elaborate further on the activities of this fund. Well, as important as, government, as important as government measures are to promote SMEs and to promote SME finance, there is a need for supplementary measures to enhance capital market finance, combining several objectives. Enhancing capital market finance can channel abundant liquidities which exist in the financial system to productive investment, can provide for sound risk management, can combine finance with services for business development, close the equity gap, and provide a sound basis for corporate governance. Of 22nd November 2017, the governor of the Central Bank of the UAE has called for private equity to help fill the void in SME finance and for private equity to play this role there is a need for regulatory reform, reform as well to liberate the potential of these equity funds. How can capital markets play a role in view of the fact that direct as, uh, access by SMEs and cross companies often remains illusory. The UAE capital markets, that means Abu Dhabi and Dubai, offer great financial potential, which remains largely untapped for SME and growth companies. If a suitable mechanism can be found for including these types of companies, there will be a considerable deepening of capital market operations and will allow, in the end, actually to upgrade the UAE capital market from emerging to fully developed. What I'm proposing here to act, uh, to, to enhance um, capital market access of these types of companies is a two-tier two structure for capital market access, which is composed by a common platform for investee companies and a central enterprise fund which would act as an intermediary. This is needed because, according to a study, of the UAE Institute of Banking and Finance, capital lending to bank lending to the key uh, critical SME sector is abysmally low. According to entrepreneur surveys, entrepreneurs seeking bank finance is one of the most time-consuming 
uncertain and, ex and frustrating experience in their business careers. A platform for SMEs and growth companies. This platform would be organized as a company or business association and could be organized on a sector or cross-sector basis according to demand. Viable companies in the SME sectors should be encouraged to adhere to this platform and this would include in particular <coughs> startups with attractive business plans and manageable operational risks. There would be through the platform a quality control of participating companies through accreditation, accreditation procedures and subsequent monitoring of performance. Adhering companies to the platform would be expect, expected to sign corporate governance charters which provide inter alia for reliable information to the platform management on the structure, activities, growth prospects and related risks of these adhering companies. And the platform would support its members for the development of business plans and operational skills. The second part of this system would be the establishment of a central enterprise fund which would, it, which would serve as an intermediary for, to capital market access for, for the platform companies. This can be linked to an existing fund or could be a new structure. Now, let me just say a word on corporate governance, because our chairman here is the co-chair of the OECD MENA Working Group of uh, Corporate Governance. The platform would, be as one of, would have as one of its objectives to improve corporate governance of SMEs and family closed businesses. And this would be in terms of disclosure and transparency would enhance protection of investor and creditor rights, would uh, improve the functioning of boards of directors where they exist, and would help close businesses and family-controlled enterprises in the transition, transmission process to new generations. The OECD principles for corporate governance are so far largely based on the model of public listed companies. So additional work is needed on these aspects. There are already corporate governance codes in some MENA countries, in particular Morocco and Egypt. And Haukama has developed training materials and toolkits in this area. But I believe that a more generalized effort is needed and we could discuss that in the upcoming meeting of the OECD MENA Working Group on Corporate Governance. Now, let's go back to the Central Enterprise Fund. This fund is supposed to act as an intermediary for capital market finance by platform members. It would be incorporated as a financial institution supervised by the capital market regulator and it would be listed on the stock exchange. It would be engaged in capital market operations through so stock exchange and other placement facilities. Raising capital through IPOs, secondary market operations and corporate bonds. And the use of these proceeds would be for financing the platform companies by means of debt and equity instruments. In other words, an indirect access to capital market resources. Now to the structure of the Central Enterprise Fund. It would be constructed to start with public seed money 
from government budgets, public financial institutions, and sovereign wealth funds. This government involvement would serve as a powerful incentive to the private sector to participate. Financial institutions, qualified investors, and institutional investors would be strongly motivated to uh, contribute. And to the extent that they would reach a majority share ownership. I believe that in addition to government initiatives, it is important to mobilize private sector financial resources. There would be, and this is important also, professional management and responsible board membership, including independent directors. And this Central Enterprise Fund would act in close cooperation with investment promotion agencies and SME development agencies. Now, this system is evolutionary. It would allow through its operation actually SME and growth companies to graduate. They would grow, they would become profitable and expand their operation. And when they have reached a critical level of growth and development, they can themselves qualify for direct capital market access. <clears throat> now, this is the business model which provides for dynamic interaction between its various components. We start with the enterprise platform, which has a number of associated companies who adhere to this platform and who would subscribe to certain obligations of quality control and corporate governance. The platform companies and the platform itself is related to the Central Enterprise Fund, which does have direct access to capital markets, so stock exchanges, IPOs, government bonds, etc. And the Central Enterprise Fund is established through public seed money, institutional investors, and private placement. And it would interact with the investment promotion and the business development agencies and with the capital market regulatory authority. Now, in conclusion, <coughs> the urgency of fiscal pressures that face Middle East oil producing states means that policymakers no longer have the luxury of the slow pace of incremental change that has characterized previous episodes of reform. We need to move forward and time is of the essence. The proposed model, which I'm presenting today, has several values. It would establish strong links between finance and the dynamic growth sector of the economy, which is built by SMEs and growth companies. It would help pooling resources for risk, for risk management and business, and business advice. It would help closing the equity gap. It would improve at the same time corporate governance within a large sector of the economy. And it would deepen the functioning of the capital market. I strongly believe that the UAE is ideally placed to operate as a pilot in implementing this business model, which could prove its significance throughout the GCC and the MENA region as well. Progress on this could be reported to the MENA Working Group on Corporate Governance, which meets in July uh, this year. And um, uh, under your co-chairmanship, Mr. Chairman, uh, we could uh, provide a first report on our discussion today. Thank you very much.